the purpose of this tutorial is to build an e-commerce site more for my own edification than for what someone else may learn uh, but I'm sharing this to see if anyone else can benefit from it I'm gonna start with a very very simple but complete e-commerce site and build on that you see here that we have some products here we see that there's only four products listed for sale with a price and an add to cart button if I click on one it takes me to the cart where you see that I have that same item here quantity one and an order total here I can also go back and continue shopping if I hit the same item again you see now that the order has changed to quantity of two and the order total has changed I can also select other products here you see I have one of these order total again has changed if I delete this it will delete both of them and now you see the order ta has changed to that. And if I, of course, then choose this product again, I now have two. My order total is 84. And without putting any information in here, I can hit submit. And it says, thank you for your order. Now that is the basic e-commerce site. Not a lot of checking and not a lot of fancy uh, work. Key to note here is this is all done on one page. So if I were to go back, I would go back to my home page, not to the beginning of this page. If I hit refresh, it takes me all the way back to here. There's no way to get to the cart, but you see that if I add this item, I'm back to the, at the very beginning. I do want to also introduce the tools that I'm using. First and foremost is this Apache uh, server, local server, XAMP, which allows me to create everything here. I'm not doing any database uh, lookups but uh, if I wanted to that I have a MySQL server here also I'm doing all of this uh, looking at it in Chrome but programming actually in NetBeans that's where all my code is it's strict uh, HTML and and JavaScript nothing more you can see here this is the name of the file the same one that we're looking at back here yes there's a lot of things I can change here and hopefully will but this is just the beginning of understanding how to put all of this together and then improving the pieces that need improvement rather than trying to solve all problems uh, right from the start. Final tool I have here is Camstasia Studios which uh, allows me to do these screen recordings and make adjustments to that. Okay we're gonna start off a little bit slow and just do some very basic work here. This is my C drive and inside my C drive is this XAMP folder. Inside of this XAMP folder is an htdocs folder that's where all of my subdirectories can be. So I've got a subdirectory there called Spring Street GIFs. You see that here. And here you see all of the folders and files, obviously, where I'll keep images. And this is proprietary files by the NetBeans project. Over here you see these files exactly matching these. So here I am now in my NetBeans, and I'm in this index.html. And this is where I am going to uh, build the, the e-commerce application. So the first thing is I declare the doc type which is HTML5 and open and close my HTML. Of course then I'll have a header and a body and a script in the header. And the only thing I'm going to put in the header right now is the title. Now that we have our basic outline we can start building the page. We're going to do that with divs. So the first div we're going to put in there is the product. Now we appropriately to give it the ID of products and we'll set the style uh, the visibility to visible so this is the first thing that you're going to see on the page the second is we're going to have a cart and the visibility is hidden so it's always on the page it's just uh, hidden or visible depending on what we're looking at finally we're going to have the thank you page which will just put out a thank you for your order message and nothing more obviously can be enhanced so these are the three different parts of the page and even though they are on the same page they're only visible at the appropriate times and not visible all together it's a way of keeping them separate but at the same time being able to keep all of the information on the page making communication a lot more simple the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a product on this page so we've got this new div and we're going to give it the ID of 001, which is a string. It can easily be converted into a number. 
Now, this we haven't done anything except uh, created a division where this product, supposed product number one, can go. We are going to put some data. This is a new parameter that it makes it really easy to pass information around. And we're going to say that this data, which is very custom, data dash price, is forty-two dollars. And then we're going to say that the style is positioned absolute and that it's left 200 and top 150 pixels. Now we're not going to worry about visibility. Um, the default is visible and because it's a nested child of this division right here, if this division is visible then it will be visible and if this division is hidden then that one will be hidden. Next, in this deal we're actually going to have uh, our first uh, item which is an image and it's in the subdirectory images and just to keep things simple, it will uh, have uh, the same uh, name, 001.jpg. And then we set the height to 300, and you'll see where we change that later. After we've got the image there, we uh, want to add another image, which is the Add to Cart button. Now, not only do we add this button and we position it on the page, but we also tell it that on click we're going to do this function add to cart and we're passing it 001 which of course matches the uh, the, the product number and uh, finally that we add a just a little object here that will display the price so even though we've got the price embedded in the data uh, we actually need to display that and so we're just going to display it here we position it uh, and set the font size to 18 and put it on the page. Now you can see that when we save this and refresh, here we've got it. We've got our three elements. We've got the image, the add to cart button, and the price right there. Now even though I have a function here that says add to cart, if I click on this, that function hasn't been defined anywhere so nothing happens. And that should be the next step, right? So the next step is to create that add to cart function. When we click on the image, we want to do this function right here. That will happen up here in our scripts. So the first thing is we write the function add to cart, and we're going to have a parameter that's get passed called item to add. We'll use that in a little bit, but first what we want to do is we want to, first of all, we want to get the products div, which is this right here and we want to change the visibility to hidden and we want to get the cart div which is right here and we want to change its visibility to visible just to make sure that uh, the cart is what we're looking at let's go ahead and add a text here that says the cart so we save that refresh and now when I click on add to cart this whole div will disappear and the cart will appear and there we go now I can't go back unless I just refresh which is just saying reload the page here but it does work so that when I click on that it does make one visible and the other hidden or invisible you should be getting the general idea of how this is going to work with divisions talking to JavaScript functions. Here in the cart now I'm going to have just something called the cart and I position it uh, by positioning the div uh, exactly and setting the font size. But I'm going to have other things in the cart. For example I'm going to have the images of the cart and I want all of the images to be uh, moved within this div. And then I'm going to have items to remove the price, the quantity, the total, and then the cart total. So that's how I'm going to divide my cart up. Without it actually doing anything, I've divided it up and set the uh, parameters there. Sometimes I'll set the color just so I could see where I am moving things. Uh, and then once I like the, where I'm moving it, I can fix the numbers there. This would all be nicely done in a CSS file, but again, we're trying to do everything in a single file here. 
So just to see how this works a little bit, I saved it and we can refresh the page. Add to cart and you see that all we've got here is this the cart in order total. If I didn't like where that was positioned or the font size, I could for example change the font size here. And then I can change the position here. And I save it, refresh, click on add to cart and you see that the font is smaller and it did move over. So once I'm happy with what I want, I just change that div and it will change everything with it. That's enough for this video now. You can see what we're going to do is we're going to divide the pages into these divs, show them and hide them and pass information along through JavaScript, uh, JavaScript functions such as this one here. None of the uh, information can be communicated in a cookie or preserved anywhere else. It's all just preserved on the page.